Chapter 8 Captured Hello, whispered Haley into his compass. Hello, Control, do you copy? Was there anybody on his side listening to him, monitoring his whereabouts? Haley didn't know. Doggedly, Solid Snake kept moving forward from one room to another. He'd hoped to find Gray Fox, but his first priority was to locate a transceiver radio as soon as he could. Time was crunching just in Haley. He needed to receive his radio messages from Control to guide him further into the depths of outer heaven, and he had to have those radio transmissions soon. Haley was feeling isolated, as though he'd been completely cut off from Foxhound Command. He didn't even know if his homing device, the compass, was operational. Was the base receiving him? Were they tracking him? Did they even know he was still alive? Taking the elevator down to the first floor, Solid Snake made up his mind to try Keycard 2 to open those locked doors that hadn't responded to him when he had only Keycard 1. To locate Metal Gear, he would need a lot more clues. Haley emerged from the elevator into a part of the level that was used as a storehouse. It was piled high with evenly stacked rows of heavy wooden crates, each one large enough to house a small truck or an all-terrain vehicle. Making his way through the stacked up wooden crates, which were painted with the outer heaven insignia, Justin Haley narrowly avoided a deadly trap door between two of them. But as he did, a nail protruding from one of the crates caught his sleeve and yanked at his arm. The compass went flying out of Solid Snake's hand, down into the well of the trap door, and out of sight. Solid Snake was stunned. He'd believed the compass to be his actual homing device, sending out a signal that only Foxhound Command could receive. He didn't know that the real homing device was sewn into the sleeve of his camouflage suit. Now, Justin thought the loss of his compass would cut him off totally from Foxhound Command. He'd have to act completely on his own, without any thought of backup help from the U.S. Marines or Commander South. But perhaps, when he found the radio, Diana might be able to guide him. Solid Snake's search for the radio doubled in intensity, and there were still more snake men to set free. Some of them might have important clues for him. Haley moved swiftly, silently, cautiously, from room to room. In one of the keycard one rooms, a prisoner named Frank Witkowski gave Justin Haley an important clue. Gray Fox is locked up in a hidden solitary cell room. The best way to get to the hidden cell is to let the enemy capture you on purpose. Let the terrorists capture him? Actually surrender to the enemy in order to infiltrate more deeply? It might be a workable plan. Could this guy Witkowski be lying to trick him? Haley freed the prisoner, and thinking hard, set off by again by himself. Looking through a door, Haley spotted three trucks parked in a row near the outside wall. Solid Snake had been lucky with trucks so far, locating rations, weapons, and necessary equipment in them. Could he get lucky again? Yes. In one of the trucks was an Ingram Mac 2 submachine gun with a full clip, with the Beretta, and now the lightweight rapid firing automatic Mac 2, not to mention the grenade launcher, the grenades, and the anti tank mines. Solid Snake was becoming a walking arsenal, ready for any fight. But it was also a pretty heavy load for one fighting man to carry. Maybe he'd make better time if he didn't have to walk or run everywhere. For example, if he had wheels. Haley decided to commandeer one of the trucks, and it was at that very moment that Justin Haley's luck ran out. As he climbed to the cab of the truck, a squad of terrorists appeared as if out of nowhere. Suddenly, Solid Snake was surrounded on all sides. There were guards everywhere, each man with an automatic weapon aimed straight at his chest. There were no options left. There was nothing to do but surrender. Haley put his hands up and allowed the terrorists to take him quietly. Captured. Solid Snake was a prisoner. Did that mean the mission was at an end? A failure? Had he let the Corps down? Betrayed the Snake Men squad? Commander South? His country? And the free world? Haley suddenly recalled the words of Frank Witkowski, the last prisoner he had freed. The best way to get to the hidden cell is to let the enemy capture you on purpose. Could that Snake Man be right? Solid Snake was about to find out. Roughly, the guards stripped Haley of his bandolier of grenades, the gas mask, the Beretta, the Mac-2, the anti-tank mines, the ammo, the grenade launcher, the binoculars, the rations. They confiscated all of Solid Snake's weapons and equipment, or at least they thought they did. But there was one crucial exception, Katafi's men missed something. Because the terrorists could not conceive of Solid Snake having key cards in his possessions, because they believed that he had brought his own weapons into outer heaven with him, and because the key cards are no larger or thicker than an American Express card, the guards didn't find them when they frisked him for more weapons. The key cards were still safe, deep down in the pocket of Solid Snake's camos. Now that he was a prisoner, what were the odds against his meeting Gray Fox? Witkowski had told him that the terrorists had the squad leader hidden away somewhere in solitary confinement. The guards spun Justin Haley around, and a bleak black greasy blindfold was tied tight
tightly around his eyes. He could see nothing. Prodding solid snake along painfully with their weapons, they marched him, stumbling, inside a building and down a long corridor. They turned so many corridors that Haley couldn't hold on to a sense of orientation. He had no idea where they were taking him. At last, they had reached a stopping point. The terrorist yanked cruelly at Solid Snake's arms to get him to stop. Just then Haley heard a cell door open, and he was pushed roughly inside, falling to the hard stone floor. The triumphant and mocking way the guards were laughing and sneering at him told Haley plainly that his interrogation would be next, and very soon. The guards didn't even bother to tie Justin up, another indication that they expected to be back for him within the hour. The door clanged shut. Reaching behind him, Solid Snake struggled with the thick knot of the blindfold until he got it off. The cell was so dimly lit that it was hard to make out anything except shadows. But in a few seconds, Haley's eyes had adjusted to the lack of light, and he looked around him. There was a chair in the corner, in which was tied a single prisoner, barely conscious. He was bound and gagged. Just then Haley went to the prisoner. He removed the gag and untied the ropes that were cutting sharply into the man's wrists. Gently, he lifted his head to look at his face. The man's features were swollen as to be unrecognizable. Can you talk? Justin whispered. It's me, Haley. Solid snake, the man whispered back through cracked lips. So they sent you. I'm Gray Fox. The prisoner's voice faltered, and his words became so faint that Haley had to press his ear against the squad leader's lips to hear what he'd say next. Listen carefully. We have very little time. The enemy is constructing the final weapon. Metal Gear. How close are they to having it finished? The must demanded Justin. Very close, perhaps. Less than an hour away. Gray Fox's words came slowly and painfully. Hang on, Gray Fox, urged Solid Snake. Don't leave me now. I need you. Can you describe Metal Gear? How does it work? Is it large? Small? No. None of the snake men have seen it. Do you know what building it's in? No. It's, a where it's very well hidden. You're going to need a map. A map? What map? This was the first that Haley had heard about a map to Metal Gear. Where will I find this map? He asked intently. The squad leader tried to raise his head, but couldn't. I don't know. I only know there is one. What about Dr. Petrovich? Solid Snake asked. Have you any clue to where they might be holding him? Gray Fox shook his head painfully. He, he could be anywhere. Katafi keeps moving him around. And Ellen, his daughter, is she here too? Yes, Katafi's men kidnapped her in order to make Dr. Petrovich talk. Didn't know that. It was obvious that Gray Fox was fading quickly. He needed a doctor. Haley felt the urgency of the situation tightening around him. This was the leader of his squad. He couldn't just let him die. He had to rescue Gray Fox. Solid Snake. Listen, not much time. Can, can you get us out of here before they come back for us? I'll try, promised Haley. But with what? His bare hands?